that you decided to fellowship with us tonight. Wednesday night Bible study for winners at the Great I Am Faith Center. As always, we are grateful for our under shepherd, Dr. Melvin Silas. We're grateful for what God has inspired him to teach us and the things that we are learning as being good stewards of the word. I hope that your week has been blessed, favorable, and blessed. And I ask that you continually seek the word of God, pray daily, and seek his face as you go throughout the day so that you can be inspired to encourage others as we are all chosen to do. A lot of times we don't feel like it, but you know, when you step out and just do it anyway, it puts a smile on your face. It relieves the tension off your shoulders, and it helps you to have a glorious and joyful day. I just pray that this message tonight will enlighten you, empower you, and hopefully encourage you to continue to run the race that has been set before you because we know we are victorious because of the God that we serve. And I thank you, and the next voice you shall hear will be Dr. Melvin Silas. Yay! Hallelujah! God bless you. God bless you. Well, praise the Lord. How is everybody tonight? It's a blessed day, Pastor. All right. Let me get situated here. Well, I pray everyone has had a, a very good day. Amen. Because we're going to have a wonderful evening. Yes, we shall. Well, if I can get this chair right there. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Well, what we're going to do, we're going to break down and just, you know, go over Sunday's message. Amen. Okay. Because yes, there's some, so many people, you know, reached out to me in regards to this message. And I believe it entitles us to go back through it again slowly. Father, I thank you and I praise you, Lord God, for this evening. I thank you, Father, for those that are here in the building, those that are watching. Father, I thank you, Lord God. That you call me, Lord God, to speak to your people. So I thank you, Holy Spirit, that it be none of me, but all of you. For you have given me the tongue of the learned. And that which you have filled me with, I shall speak. And I thank you for your anointing, Father, being in this place and on my life. And it is the anointing that destroys the yoke. So I thank you, Father, that people will be set free chains will be broken. I thank you that people will be healed, delivered in the name of Jesus. And let the church say amen. Amen. And like I said, we we going to talk about this. I believe that if you're watching on the website, if you have any questions or anything you'd like me to clear up, uh, there is a chat. But right now, we don't have anybody that's manning the chat, but I will look at it tomorrow and answer any of your questions if I do have your email. If I don't have your email, then put it there, and then any questions that you give, I'll reach out to you. You'll get a response from me in a day or two. For those of you that are on Facebook, I think Face, uh, First Lady is viewing it on Facebook, so she would be able to give me any questions that you may have or any comments or responses. Let's work with it like that. So, I started out Sunday with two different scriptures. Well, actually three. And that was Proverbs 18:24, And it says, There are friends who destroy each other, but a real friend sticks closer than a brother. Now, I want you to look at that. There are friends, and I'm looking at the um, New Living Translation, it says there are friends who destroy each other. The reason that I feel that speaking about friends is, is really important because we know the necessity of, you know, food, water, housing, shelter. 
but I believe that friendship is also a necessity in human life and we the average person desires to have friendship you know solid good friendships marriages start out dating one another and you start out as friends you know and a lot of times we mistake the different types of friends the categories they fit in the next one that I uh, passage is Proverbs 17 17 it says a friend is always loyal and a brother is born to help in time of need okay a friend is always loyal we know that we have had you know some loyal friends and some not so loyal we've had some that have attempted to destroy us some that have helped us reveal that's why I want you to understand the difference in friendship I read to you from Psalms 55 1 through 23 I'm not going to read the entirety of it but I want you to look at this this is David David says it in this is 55 12 it is not an enemy who taunts me I could bear that it is not my foes who arrogantly insult me I could have hidden from them Instead, it is you, my equal, my companion, and close friend. What good fellowship we once enjoyed as we walked together in the house of God. So David was dealing with an issue here in his life, but the issue was being delivered and, and, and given to him by someone close. There are many different friendships in the Bible. We know the friendship of Jesus and Lazarus. And Jesus and Lazarus' friendship, I would say, it's like friendship beyond death. <laughs> because Jesus' love for his friend Lazarus was truly remarkable. When he arrived to find that Lazarus had already been dead for four days, Jesus wept. You can find that in John 11.35. And expressed his deep affection for his dear friend Lazarus and Jesus rose him back up from the dead there's another awkward friendship that's Jesus and Judas Judas betrayed Jesus but Jesus' friendship always stayed the same you could not identify any difference between how Jesus treated Judas or the other disciples but Jesus knew that J Judas was going to betray him. Some of your friendships may be Judas. I'll say that again. Some of your friendships may be the same type that Judas had for Jesus. Betrayal. Okay? But what you have to understand is even Judas had his purpose. And even the people that may hurt you, disappoint you in life, they have their purpose. God will turn their evil to good, just like he did with uh, Joseph, all that his family did to him, all that he went through. And Joseph, at the end, he said, hey, I think it's in Genesis 50, he said, hey, what you intended for evil, God turned it to good. Okay? How about uh, Jesus and his disciples? Jesus had 12 disciples as we know these 12 apostles they followed Jesus everywhere but out of those 12 apostles Jesus had three that were closer and experienced more than the other nine that was Peter James and John okay his beloved disciple all right he shared some things with them all right that he did not share with the others. So it showed that he had a closer friendship with them. He loved all 12, but there was three that he shared certain things with that the others did not experience. And that's where we were talking on Sunday that 
you know, your confidant, that person that is really, 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 really down for you, it's that person that you can share those things with, all right? But you have to be very careful who you share those things with. Let's talk about David and Jonathan, this friendship. David's friendship with Jonathan, it supported him in many ways. And no one else could. I mean, Jonathan, man, they, they, they had a bond. They had a bond, and and this friendship is looked on as a real a bond, a bonding friendship, okay? And that's what your confidant is, that, you know, no matter what you go through, no matter what you have to face, my goodness, they are there for you. They're there in the good times, they're there in the bad, Okay? Then you have Ruth and Naomi. You know, the, the, these two women, they went through a lot. Naomi was Ruth's mother-in-law. And they both, they, 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 Naomi had lost her husband. Then, then Ruth loses her, her husband. And, but their bond, their bond came together out of tragedy. Sometimes you can meet people that have been through tragedy. And you could you could you could form a tight bond, you know. There are different types of relationships, different types of friendships, but in order for us to be, what what is the word I could use? In order for us to be in a place of protecting ourselves, which is necessary, we have to know what type of friendship. A person is really offering to us that'll keep us from being hurt because we know that if it's not a long-term friendship we we're not we're not as upset when they leave if we know that their motives are not wrong we're not upset that much when they do something underhanded but it's because we don't analyze because we don't qualify people when they come into our lives that people have the opportunity to cause devastation in your life. You know, this is why so many um, men, and I'll say women, but I'll say men also, become, become devastated, you know, when they thought that a person was going to be in their life for all their life, and then they jump up and decide that this is not the ticket. Okay? There are many reasons for that. Okay? There are many reasons for that. But everybody wants a, you know, a lifetime partner. You know, you don't, you don't go into marriage for ten, a 10-year ten agreement. You go into marriage and you, you, you build relationships. Why? Because you're looking for something for a lifetime. Okay? For a lifetime. So then when you invest time, money, energy, and you find out it's not the right person, a great deal of the time you could, you, you, you could blame yourself. I should have seen this coming. I should have, you know. You know, we, we, we need to stop the blame game and just be more careful. A great deal of the time we're not taking people before the Lord and ask God, how do these people fit in my life? How do these people fit in my life, Lord? And if you ask him, he will show you. And some of you have asked that and you got the, you didn't get the answer you wanted. So you just act like you didn't hear it, and then when something happens, you know, we take everything to God in prayer. That's the way we should do. Take everything to him in prayer. That's the reason that he gave us the privilege of prayer, to talk to him. And that's what we need to do. We need to start talking to him more. Father, is this the job that I should take? Is this the car I should buy? Should I do, you know, ask him. And don't be in such a hurry. Wait till you get a release from him saying, yes, that's what you can do. You get a yes from him. You know, don't don't act like you don't hear him when you get a no. I'm going to say that again. Don't act like you don't hear him when you get a no. Because if you don't change it after you get a no, we don't get upset when when it doesn't go right for you. When it doesn't go right for you, God wants the best for you, okay? 
Then we have Elisha and Elisha. Now that relationship was a relationship I would consider out of respect and dedication. Okay? Because Elijah had been a prophet for a long time. And there was a lot of pressure on him. He found himself hiding in the mountains from King Ahab, who wanted him dead. Okay? But God called the prophet back into the game. He said, no, 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 no. It ain't over yet. Come on. I got some more for you to do. And then he, he tells him to anoint Elisha to be his successor. From that point on, Elisha becomes Elisha's shadow. This is a friendship that was that that was created out of respect and dedication. So he becomes his shadow. He follows the elder prophet and learned everything he could from him. You see, there are people that will attach themselves to you also out of respect and dedication. But you have to know how to handle that situation. And I know there's a lot of people that, you know, we can pour into and, you know, give information to. I mean, e even on your jobs, you help people out and then they flip the script on you. Okay. All right. Again, there are different types of relationships. And that's why I talked about it the way I did on Sunday. Let's recap those th those three types now. Confidant. These type of people, you are going to have very few of them in your life. Okay? I mean, if you if you have seven, eight of them, man, you blessed. If you got one or two, you blessed. Okay? They are into you. No matter what, man, they're your friends. I mean, these are the people that if they think something's wrong, they'll drive to your house at 1 a.m. in the morning to make sure you're all right. You know? I mean, if, you, if you're going through something, they're going to stick it out with you. You know, they're going to call. They call so much that, you know, you, they, you, they're bugging you now. But that's because they care. All right? Right or wrong, right or wrong, they're going to be there for you. Okay? Why? It's because they are in your life for the long haul. For the long haul. You know, I, I look at one of my daughters, uh, her frat sisters. You know, once or twice a year, they fly together. They fly across country, you know, to meet one another and spend some days together, you know. I mean, you're going to have those type. That's the type of people you want in your life. Those are the type of people you want in your life. Because those type of people you can share anything with. A lot of times, many people don't have anybody they can share what they're really going through with. Because, you know, if something happens and you feel shame, you feel embarrassed, you know, you don't want anybody to know. But if you got a diehard friend, you don't mind talking to that person. You don't mind sharing your heart and what you've been through. Why? Because you know that that particular person, that particular person, will protect your secrets. Okay? You know, so that's, that's, the, that's, that's a confidant. I mean, really, that's a confidant. And, 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 and we need those in our life. We do. We need those in our life. And if you don't have any now, pray and ask God. Pray and ask God to, to, to bring or send someone into your life, all right, that is going to be that type of friend, all right? No matter what you're going through, you know, you can open up and share anything with them. Amen. You have to have people like that in your life. You need to have people like that in your life. Okay, but you have to watch who's in your life. Where, w what type of friend are they? I mean, many of you, as you heard me say before, you know, there are people that always call on you. But how many people can you actually call on when you're in need? How many? 
When you're in need, how many can you really call on? Think about it. Think about it. And, and a great deal of the time, we give a lot of energy and time to the wrong type of people in our life. And that's only because we want them to be our confidant. But they're not. They're your constituent. They're your constituent. Okay? They are not into you. They are into what you are for. If you like to get high, they want to get high. If you like to drink, they want to drink. You know what I'm saying? You know, they in they into you for what you're for. And, and, and I'm going to show you how that happens. Many people had a lot of friends. And then all of a sudden they started going to church and they got saved. You wasn't into the clubbing no more. You wasn't into getting high no more. You wasn't into, you know, you know, guzzling down the booze no more. You wasn't into none of that. And you lost a lot of friends. Because you were no they you you weren't into what they were into and they weren't into what you were into. Okay? You see a confidant, hey, you going to church, that's good. That's great. Even if they don't want to attend church, they'll they won't they won't talk you out of going because they'll look at your excitement of what you're doing and they'll say, yeah, keep on, man. I, all right, I, I, you know, we can't hook it up on Sunday morning no no, no more, so I, I'll get at you Sunday evening after church. Call me. You know, these are people that care for you. But a person that's a constituent, oh, no. Mm-mm. As long as you for what they are for, they will walk with you all day long. But the minute you change and you're no longer for what they're for, they're out. They're out. They're out. See, and you have to know this because if you meet someone that can further your agenda all right and that's all they're there for is that agenda whatever that agenda may be oh they gonna leave the moment they hook up with someone else that can further their agenda you you know you're done you're over that's the way a lot of relationships are oh, because you don't want to go to bed with me because you a christian well, I'm going to find me somebody else. You don't want to go to bed with me because you don't love me. You don't have to prove your love to anyone like that. You really don't. You really don't. Okay? You stay to your guns because if, that's your, if that person really, really loves you and cares for you, they're going to wait on you. They're going to wait. You're not going to expose yourself like that. You know, you don't have to go out like that. Stick to your guns. See, you have to come to a point in your life as a believer. Who do I love more? Him, her, or God? You have to settle that question. You have to settle that question. And it's not being disrespectful to that person. It's having that person to understand. This is where I'm at right now. You can't be with me on this. And see, then most of the time when, 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 when you let that person smash, they end up going anyway. Hello? You know I'm telling the truth. Don't turn me off. Don't turn me off because right now we are just talking. And that's what I want to do is talk to you. You are a believer in Christ Jesus. You are a child of the Most High God. You have to know how to handle situations and people. That's a must. I told you 
three and a half years, G Judas was rolling with Jesus. But all the time, Jesus knew that this person would betray him. There are people that have betrayed you. There may be people that will betray you. But you can't let that stop your life. Because not only now have they betrayed you, have they hurt you, they have put your life on hold. You have to, you have to ask God to help you heal. And some people can heal quicker than others and some healing may take longer than others but you still have to live tomorrow even after what happened yesterday I don't forgot one of my wife's friends first lady's friend always talking about put your big girl panties on <laughs> and she said to me when she be telling me all that but you, in other words sh tighten it up strengthen it up you know, you know, throughout your life, and particularly when you're broken, you you'll try to you'll pick up a lot of friends, people around you, right? When you're going through something and you're broken, all right, and you can easily mistake different friendships while you're going through that 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 phase of your life, okay. You can mistake, you know, a constituent for a confidant, um, a, co a comrade for a confidant, all right? That's why I said pray. Pray about everything in your life and everybody that comes into your life. Let God show you. See, if we trust God, hear me, I said if you trust God. See, that if means it's also possible for you not to trust God. If you trust God, okay, if you trust God, then you wait on Him. You wait on God. You just don't know, Pastor, how long it's been. Maybe it's been a long time. But if you get your focus off the length of time and put your focus on God, maybe it might not seem that long. Hello? Hello? See, sometimes we can let things take us off of our focus with God, okay? What do I mean by that? We'll want something or someone so bad that we'll put God in second place. And it's not intentional. Because, see, the devil is shrewd. He's real shrewd. It's just, you know, uh, you were going to church on a regular basis. Now, all of a sudden, you you know, you miss one Sunday and, you know, and then next month you're missing two. You know, you, uh, you know, y'all kicking it, you know. And then all of a sudden, you haven't been to church in two months. What kind of relationship would you have with God? All right. And, and don't come to me talking about I ain't got to go to church to be a Christian. You know what? When I hear people say that, that live in the city, if you was in Timbuktu and there was no churches out there, I understand. But when there's churches here, the Bible says, do not forsake the assembly of yourself. So, you know, you ain't got no problem finding a Burger King because you love that Whopper. You go to your phone and find that you went to the nearest Burger King, went to the nearest Carl's Jr., I'm hungry. See? So really stop and think, what type of love is that that you have for God? Yeah. That you will let anyone that you're building a friendship with pull you from serving God or any situation bring you from serving God? Huh. We're just talking. I, I, I just want to talk to you. You know, we're talking about different types of friendship. You know, hmm. now let's go ahead and go to this comrade. <laughs> Comrades are people that are not for you, nor are they for what you are for. <laughs> 
they are again they are just against what you're against if you got if you got a neighbor across the street that you don't like and your next door neighbor don't like them they don't really care nothing about you they just become your friend because both y'all just like the lady across the street that's what happens a lot of times in churches this is why a lot of church splits happen because you know this person is mad at one person in the church this person gets mad at another person in church and then there's a person that's mad at the past and they get together and become comrades comrades and what they're doing they 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 they, they create a lot of friction okay and I've seen this once they lead a church you know they talk to you, they, 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 they stroke each other to lead a church or to quit their job I've seen that too to quit their job because this is wrong and that's wrong and then they don't even really deal with each other after that short period after that they all go their own way because a comrade is only hooked to you as long as you are against the things that they are against. Okay? Never get that enemy confused. Never. They will only they will only stay with you until the victory that they accomplish that they want to accomplish is done. People we got to start really analyzing the people that we allow in our, our lives, man. This is what is really in my heart because I am very particular about the people that come in my house, even workers that come in my house. I'm very particular about that, okay? And if I'm that particular about someone coming into my house, man, how much more should I be about someone coming into my life See, I can let the wrong person, you know, come into my house and they could steal something that I could replace. But if I let the wrong person come into my life and they steal my joy, my peace, and my place with God, wow. That's why I'm talking to you about this. You know, that's why I'm talking to you about it. And I had no intentions of being here long, you know, really long tonight. I just wanted to recap what we went over. Because I think it was, you know, it was meaningful to do this. Yeah. It really was. Yeah. Because I, I see so much as a pastor, devastation in relationships and friendships. And it's just because, you know what? That person was not your confidant. But again, I remind each of you, life still goes on. Even when you're hurt, you're battered, you got to get up the next day and still live. Yeah. I know that the devil has told some people that suicide is the best way. Look, God says that, you know what? That's a weak person's way out. It really is. You know? And it's a person that has no consideration for anyone else but themselves. Why do I say that? It's because you don't care how the people feel around you if you do that, how you're going to affect them, how you're going to hurt them. You're only caring about yourself and what you want. I just want out. Hey, uh-uh. You know, don't let the devil sucker you behind that because that person that left, man, you know what? It could be a good thing that they left. It really could. It could be a good thing that they left because you may meet somebody that's going to be just right for you. Okay, you got fired from that job. All right. But the next job you get could be the job that you've always wanted. You know, don't let the tragedies in your life that happened yesterday and today don't let those tragedies, don't let those mistakes determine your tomorrow. That's what I'm saying to you tonight. Don't let that happen.
don't let that happen. Well, as I said, I'm going to end now. I'm going to end now. And if, you know, you, you, you feel led by the Lord to sow a seed, you know how to do it. Go to our website, you know, or go to Give a Five, whichever way you want to do it. You know, we greatly appreciate that. And for those of you that have sown into this ministry, I just want to say thank you. You know, 15 years, we could, you know, God has sent you into our lives to, you know, to help. And you have been very helpful. You have. And we pray over that seed that it be returned to you, you know, in abundance. So thank you. You know, we don't take it for granted. You know, we don't take you for granted. Man, but uh, I hope you got something from tonight. You know, you probably say, well, Pastor, it was so short. It was so short. And, you know, it was so short. But some messages don't have to be long. And you have to know how to let the Lord lead you to the end and know when the Lord says end. And right now he's telling me, end it. God bless you. Love you. This is Pastor Mel from the Great I Am Faith Center. God bless. Bye-bye now.